Well, hello everyone. My name is Sibylla I Love, and here on this channel, we're getting back to living and loving life again after a major life-altering loss, such as being widowed. There, now, this channel is dedicated to people trying to reown and reclaim their lives again. And I do this with 20 years, over 20 years of experience as a therapist. And also I've had a ridiculous amount of loss myself by a very early age. Now, by the age of 42, I had lost both my parents, two brothers, best friends, clients, cousins, extended friends and family, clients. And I say clients again, because some of those have been very sad to have seen lost from this world. But none of that prepared me for the loss of my husband when I was 42. Now, I share the story of my journey with my viewers because I believe peer support is important. I share the story with my clients because I believe peer support is pivotal in helping us to be able to heal, knowing that the person we're talking to has also walked in similar shoes. Now, I used to live in rural Alaska. Now I lived in the Aleutians, which is, uh, if you've ever seen this show, The Deadliest Catch, that is the area of Alaska that I lived in. And my husband was a commercial fisherman and he had his own boat and not as big one like you saw on the, sh on the uh, Deadliest Catch, but uh, he had about a 40, 43 foot um, commercial fishing boat. And he fished for salmon and cod and halibut. And he'd get subsistence crab. And he would get bear dye crab for selling. And we'd sell it to the cannery there in town. And I lived in a community of less than a thousand people, usually somewhere between six and nine hundred, depending on the time of year. And it was also uh, known as a, a Unangin village, which may be more commonly known as Aleut. And my husband went out fishing for cod. And I got a call in the morning from a friend of mine who came to my house. She knocked on the door and she said, Sibylla, what are you doing? And I said, nothing. And I'm thinking she's coming to my door because she's having some kind of a crisis. Now, I worked in the community as a therapist, and so a lot of people would come to me with their problems. And so this was not a surprise. She sat me down. She said, give me a cup of coffee. She said, Sevilla, somebody's missing off the fishing vessel, Taurus. And they believe it's your husband. My life as I knew it ended in that instant. When someone goes missing off a fishing boat in Alaskan waters, they do not live for more than 10 minutes, 20 at the maximum. Hypothermia sets in, muscles become rigid, and even if you wanted to save yourself, you couldn't. It was a deeply tragic moment for me because even though they hadn't found him yet, they said, don't panic, don't worry. Maybe we'll find him, maybe he's okay. I was born and raised in Alaska and I knew those placating words were all BS. I knew he was gone, but I lost him not just once, but twice that day. Because miracles of miracles. I got a call from my friend. She had left me to myself because she had to go back to work. And she called me and she said, Sevilla, 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 they just called over the radio because they were all using CB radios. Now, meanwhile, I had watched the uh, all the boats in town go out to look for him. The Coast Guard helicopters were flying overhead and I was watching all of this from my living room window 
while my little boy slept in the other room. I had children, neighbor's children, staying overnight, and they were all sleeping in the other room. My friend says they found him. They found him, and he's alive. He's got hypothermia, but he's coming in. I was elated. Now, one part of this story is you need to know. I had already called our family. Grandpa, the kids' grandparents, grandpa, grandfather. I called my stepdaughters. One who was pregnant and the other who was away at boarding school in her senior year, just getting ready to graduate. And I had called them and told them what had happened. Now, elated, I called them back and said they found him. He's alive. We were all overjoyed. It was a miracle. I got another call back. My friend showed up at my door again, and she had tears in her eyes, and she said, Dear God, can't do this to you twice in one day. She said they made a mistake. The person who found him, when they called it on the radio, they said, we have the survivor. But he misspoke. He was young. He was traumatized, pulling in someone he knew from his own community, a friend. He misspoke. There was no survivor. My husband died twice in one day. I understand grief, my friends. I understand. The only person I haven't lost in my life is a child, God forbid. I do specialize in grief and loss, and I work with people all the time that have lost a child. Each loss is different. Each person you lose in your life is a different definition of who you believe yourself to be in relation to them and how they help to define you in this world. Losing your partner that you share your life with, that you raise your children with, that you create a home with, is a different identity. And when people get divorced, they say, I lost the marriage. I'm working on my marriage. My marriage is in trouble. I have a happy marriage. So it's always this third entity of a thing that exists in addition to you two as individuals. And that gets ripped away. Even if you didn't have a particularly happy marriage, there's still that identity that is now gone. And you have to remake yourself. If you have an identity in relation to being a mother or a father, or a brother, or a sister, or a girlfriend, or a boyfriend, or a friend. All of these things require you to remake yourself. This is what I help people do in my private practice. I work as a psychotherapist for the states that I'm licensed in, and I also work as a coach and consultant for people all over the world. If you would like some individual help with that, with whatever you're going through, get help from someone, somewhere. You can look for a, a therapist in your state. If you're in the United States, through psychologytoday.com, they can help you locate a, a, a specialist in your area. You could contact me if you'd like. I'll put the link in the description below. But whoever you are and wherever you are, know that one of the most important things we need to do in our healing is to get people around us, to get support. We heal in the context of community. And I want you to hear that you are not alone, no matter who you've lost, no matter where you're at in your life. If you're a widow, I recommend going to Soaring Spirits International. It's a group specifically for widows and widowers. 
to get the help and support that they may need. And they have 24 seven people online and groups talking to each other and reaching out. That helped me a lot in my early days to not feel so alone and to keep myself out of the deep abyss, the deep abyss. And as always, I have many videos on this channel that hopefully may help to hold you up, inspire you, carry you forward and remind you that you're not alone and that your life's not over, no matter what you've been through. And believe me, as a grief and loss specialist, just when I think I've heard the worst of stories, I meet another beautiful soul who's had the most tragic, tragic of experiences. We're human beings in this world, but we're also spiritual beings having this human experience we're all here for a reason. And if you're still here, there is purpose yet in your days. And I hope to help you find that through videos here online or to inspire you to find help somewhere. But do so. Don't allow yourself to be alone because we heal in the context of community. Be kind to yourself. And have a good evening, morning, or afternoon.